comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says God. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. We gather and I welcome you as a response to this need and this promise. Please join me in the call to worship. Blessed is God, the interwoving breath of life, who in every generation breathes prophetic truth into the throats of human beings. As we shout and cry out, God says, open up, open up, and clear a path. Clear away all obstacles from the path of my people. For so says the one who forever dwells upon high, whose name is holy. I dwell on high in holiness with the lowly and the mean to breathe new breath into the humble and to give new heart to the brokenhearted. Let us worship God. Amen. Let us pray. This is what I desire, says God. Unlock the handcuffs put on by wicked people. Let the oppressed go free and break off every yoke. Share your bread with the hungry. Bring the poor, the outcast to your home. They are your flesh and blood. Do not hide yourselves from them. Then your light will burst upon, burst through like the dawn. Then when you need healing, it will spring up quickly. Then your own righteousness will march ahead to guard you. To a radiance from God will reach out behind to guard you. Then when you cry out, God, the breath of life, will answer. When you call, God will say, here I am. O oh Christ, here we are and here we call. Let us hear you say, here I am. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Amen. The battle hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching To confession. For a moment, you may have felt I abandoned you, but with great compassion I gather you, says the Lord. For a moment, you may have felt I hid my face from you, but with an everlasting love I show you loving kindness, says Christ our Redeemer. Let us confess our sins to God. God, be merciful to us, for on your throne of grace we place our petition. Gather us, we pray. God of mercy, gather us in the wide embrace of your love. In your great mercy, receive us yet again as your beloved. Renew our hearts, gracious God. Make our spirits true. Draw us near. Let your spirit dwell among us. Write your name on our hearts. With steadfast love, 
Move us to seek you where you may be found, dwelling among the oppressed and besieged. Lead us so that we may again find you awaiting our return, liberating us to live with joy, peace, and resilience, no matter what may beset us. Inspire us to fight, serve, and pray. Hear our prayer. Free us yet again and make us whole again. Now a period of silent confession. Amen. Together let us seek assurance of pardon. God with the truth of our lives is itself an act of faith. We trust that the Holy One hears us and is even now restoring our hearts, minds, and souls. We trust that God's mercy is rolling down like mighty waters, justice like an ever-flowing stream. So we thank God for God's creative imagination that continues to recreate and reinvigorate us. We know that we know that we know. The God of our ancestors who stayed with them will stay with us, marching us toward glad, God's glad day of justice and freedom. Believe the good news. Hallelujah. Amen. Well. How about we continue our worship with our anthem? Well, let me say good morning to everybody. Love you so much. Appreciate seeing you every Sunday morning. And this morning, we've got a special treat for you. Roger Croco, who is not only our wonderful engineer, but he is our newest tenor, is going to bless us with our musical anthem. His precious wife is going to introduce him. Who better to know him? So Roger uh, wrote some notes. I know him so well. I almost felt too close to him to introduce him. Um, he was born in San Francisco, went to the University of Oregon. Uh, he just retired from his video production business uh, for 32 years. And uh, we just celebrated 32 years of marriage this week. And. Uh, we live here on a houseboat in Sausalito, and um, he is loving singing with you, Carolyn, and with the choir. He's very honored to get to be with you, and uh, it's been such a joy, and you've been such a wonderful coach. We're so grateful for that. And um, anyway, he loves to sing, but he said he makes him very nervous. So let's all uh, hold him up there and let's let it go, Raj. Please. <laughs> praying for you. Right. Can you hear the music? Yes. Right on. Well, we're all going through a lot these days, but it's a good thing that we have a God who's able to take all things and turn them to the good. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, you could ask or think according to the power that works through you and me mm -hmm. God is able to do just what he said he would do He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He is able, He is able, He is able, God is able. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill 
every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He is able, He is able, He is able, my God is able. Just what he said. Ada. Ini sebab kena binari binai. Ayo, di lantai. Ayo, kau makan tak pasca. Let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. scripture readings today, all from the book of Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for God has spoken. I reared children and brought them up but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey is master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, offspring who do evil, children who deal corruptly, who have forsaken God and have despised the Holy One of Israel, who are utterly estranged. Why do you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart 
faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but bruises and sores and bleeding wounds, they have not been drained or bound up or softened with oil. Your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from God's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of God has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, God comes with might and God's arm rules. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in her arms and carry them in her bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to cre create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the joys of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring, offspring blessed by God and their descendants as well. Before thy call, I will answer while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This word comes from the mouth that breathes life. Thanks be to God. This morning, my heart is touched with the level of pain that we're all feeling. But I'm also encouraged that there is one that sits high and looks low, and there is one that loves us all. And this morning, I invite you to join me as I express my love to the one that cares. I 
I lift my hands in total adoration unto you for your reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. And I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. on the throne for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything God and we love you more than anything so we ask that the words of our mouths and the meditation in our hearts and the sorrow in our spirits all be placed into your redeeming and strong hands in Jesus name we pray amen amen what happens when a nation turns its back on God, when it acknowledges God but does not follow God, when it twists, distorts, silences, or forbids the proclamation of truth and destroys God's vision and intention of peaceable living as a society. Isaiah is addressing a sinful nation laden with immorality and injustice. As we read in Isaiah 1, a nation with offspring who, who do evil, who deal corruptly, who have forsaken God, who have despised the Holy One, and who are utterly estranged. That's what Isaiah says in Isaiah 1, 4. And oh, how timely it is to look at the book of Isaiah who when faced with a corrupt nation, held that nation accountable, speaking prophetic truths about what it means to have God politics, that is, politic, politics of healing. Like Isaiah's political context, 
in our context also, the hurts and the deep wounds, the corruption and distortions of the way of truth, peace and justice are happening in the same way as the political context that I, Isaiah, faced. What people suffer in Isaiah's context and in ours is the result of pol politics gone wrong. Immorality runs wild in the community where relationships are dysfunctional because religion and politics have gone wrong. In our context, which features some of the same political malice as in Isaiah's context, the very establishment of the nation, the very establishment of our nation, the U.S., is founded on theft, that is the theft of land, genocide, genocide of Native Americans and slavery, the kidnapping and enslavement and harsh labor and then ongoing violence against people of African descent. When a nation is founded on theft, genocide, and slavery, a politic of civil unrest is the result. Civil peace is forfeited. And the nation must create a new thing altogether, a new political context to become a community such as Isaiah envisions and God intends. To get at the politics of healing and Isaiah's model of community, the healing movement has to take place within the political context, the political context that we're in. But first, let's get a better understanding of Isaiah's context. The book of Isaiah covers about 200 years of Israel history, Israel's history. The theology that shapes and forms this profound prophetic book offers a model of community that takes seriously the politics of healing. Chapter 1 through 39 of Isaiah are written around the 8th century BCE. So when we look at BCE, we're going to come forward. So we'll go 8, 7, 6, all the way to the birth of Jesus, and then we go up again. So 8th century BCE, and it's commonly called 1st Isaiah. Isaiah is divided into three sections. And in 1st Isaiah, or chapters 1 through 39, we see the socioeconomic and political critique of an unjust society that Isaiah is making. And then in chapters 40 through 55, that was our second reading, came from that section. It's written around the 6th century BCE. It's called 2nd Isaiah commonly, and it's the most quoted portion of Isaiah. It's a public naming of the pain and the loss of the death and the grief and the catastrophes of communal life that shaped the experience of the oppressed. This is where we hear comfort, O oh, comfort my people. And in the last third, or Isaiah 3, which chapters 56 through 60, written somewhere between the 6th and the 5th century BCE, this proclaims the powerful release of the imagination to envision and create a politic of new beginnings. Imagination that envisions and creates a new future rooted in inclusive justice and peace. Each of these periods in Israel's history is dominated by a violent and oppressive political power operating within the geopolitical dynamics of the day. When Christians read Isaiah, we usually skip over the first 39 chapters. We read short and comforting clips from the next 15 chapters, and we focus only on the feel-good parts of the last 10 chapters that proclaim the vision of a new beginning. But when we do that, we miss the work that Isaiah is calling the community to do to get to that new inclusive community of justice and peace. We miss the politics of healing. I like to think, I like to imagine Isaiah's cries about socioeconomic injustice 
and criticism of the politics of the day were actually cries uttered to disrupt and interrupt unjust practices and empty worship of the day. Isaiah cries and it is God who compels him to proclaim that as he says in, in, in Isaiah 1, the whole head is sick and the heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even into the head, there is no soundness in it. Your country lies desolate. Your cities are burning with fire. I just imagine Isaiah marching and elbowing his way through the crowds at the temple and disrupting with shouts and cries of outrage, shouting out this radical challenge to the community. Yes, crying out to us, disrupting, disrupting our politics with our 400 years of political catastrophe. Like ancient Israel, catastrophes of floods and slavery and poor leadership and colonization and occupation of hostile forces. Isaiah interrupts our thinking that God does not hold God's people accountable to the creation and maintenance of a body politic of justice and peace. God does hold us accountable. Isaiah is interrupting our thinking that the politics of corruption and hate and violence will go on and on without consequences. Interrupting our thinking that we will have to not only turn our political practices and social relationships into a politic of healing, but we must also turn our hearts into hearts filled with compassion and guided by moral character and inclusive justice. Can we create a politic of healing? Is it possible? Well, yes, I think of course it's possible. Of course we can become, well, of course we can do this because God is a God of peace and justice. This, this is the God we serve. So if we say it's not possible, in a, in a sense we're saying there is no God of compassion. So of course it's possible. We can be guided by compassion and God is eager to guide us in the compassionate way and eager to delight in us. We just need to know how to tap into God's mercies, which are new every morning. And when I say new every morning, what I mean is that every day we can tap into God's unlimited mercies to establish a day, this day, as a political day of justice, a political day of peace, and a political, a body politic day of mercy. We work at it. We do not remain silent in the face of oppression and injustice. Like Isaiah, we are compelled by God to cry out, to disrupt, disrupt the work of evil and to work, uh, to envision, to create, and to maintain a politic of healing. Acknowledging God, the God of justice, and caring for the most vulnerable, the most targeted, the most wounded, will guide us as we make a politic of healing, a politic of social economic justice, a politic of communal kindness. That is how we get the knee of the nation off the neck of God's people. That is how we heal the hurts and shape the future. James Baldwin said this about the United States, that the United States is a death-dodging civilization. But Baldwin says that no, it's not about dodging death. It's about embracing the passion, the conundrum of life lived with justice and truth and peace. It's not about dodging death. It's about creating a community based on justice and peace. Now to create the vision of the community and politics of healing that Isaiah is crying uh, um, is, it, it, about is God's intention for us. And a first step is to show solidarity 
with the oppressed, to stand with the oppressed. We are seeing that now. We must turn toward our neighbors and do justice by our neighbors. We will have to demonstrate courage and resolve to advocate for justice in the face of oppressive and repressive pushback and embody confidence that the changes we demand must take place in order to establish God's vision of a politic of justice and that sound social and spiritual healing is possible. We have to be confident in that stance. We must be seekers of the truth and set our heart, mind, and spirits free, free to love, free to vision a new day, free to to act justly, free to build a society of justice. There is no one way to build a society of, of justice. There's no one way to transform our lives. But we must support all the ways, all the gifts that people have to create a civilization of justice. As a, a politic that does justice and loves kindness and, and understands that we are interconnected in a complex web of political relationships. That's why there's not just one way. Some people might be working on education. Some people might be working on economics and uh, labor. Uh, some people might be working on the environment. Some people might be running for elected office. There's no one way, but we can support anything that is guiding us toward a, a politic of justice and healing. There is no way to grow a faithful people, no, uh, no way to grow a faithful people without refusing to be silent even when there is no one listening. There is no way to love our neighbors without knowing our neighbors and letting ourselves be known. Isaiah gives us a, a communal text. It's not individualized or spiritualized text. It's a communal text that addresses public issues critically and with creative imagination. It's a communal text that condemns the contemptible religious practice that conspires with evil political intentions. Isaiah's text names the public and political pain and trauma of the day. And then give expression to the redemptive release of imagination that empowers us to envision a new future. Let us leave this place today with the cry of Isaiah's warning in our ears. We are the church and we can make a powerful difference for establishing a society of peace and communities of justice. We are Isaiah's vision of a politic of healing. We are God's vision of a politic of healing. We are the future of social peace in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, in our courage, in our voice, in our resolve. We are God's vision and intention of a peaceable kingdom. Amen.
far. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Amen. It is now time for us to um, prepare to send our, our tithes and our offerings. Uh, I hope you'll don't wait till Sunday. You can do that anytime during the week uh, when you're paying your bills or you have your checkbook out or you're on the computer. Uh, you can go to the website and use the PayPal button. So um, this is the time um, just to be thankful and to give out of the many blessings that God has given to us. And so let us let us continue our service and we will uh, have the, um, we'll share our, the power of poetry, uh, which uh, Diane will uh, uh, gratefully, I'm so grateful for her reading for this, this poem today. A poem by Bernadette Meyer, The Tragic Condition of the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Give me your gentrified people of the Lower East Side. Give me your landlords. Give me your real estate developers. Give me the IRS, FBI, CIA, NRA, men who don't take election day off. Give me certain members of the school board and give me the district superintendent. Give me all the greedy members of both American and foreign capitalists. Give me the parents of the college cheat scandals. Give me the president and his tiny men in their tiny White House. Give me the cops who laugh and sneer at meetings where they demonstrate the new uses of mace and retell the old stories of violence against black bodied people. I was surprised and saddened when I heard that the Statue of Liberty was in such a serious state of despair. This poem is my modest contribution to restoration. Wow. 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 Thank you. <laughs> this is Men's Mental Health Month, and Pastor has uh, highlighted that. And just because I know that a lot of us are too busy to read, I'm going to read the passage that she offered. It's to support men to take care of their bodies, minds, and spirits. The official symbol of the month is a blue ribbon, and the purpose of Men's Health Month is to heighten the awareness of preventable health problems and encourage early detection and treatment of diseases, including prostate cancer, heart disease, STDs, childhood injuries, smoking, gun violence, motor vehicle accidents, high blood pressure, and depression. It's a great opportunity to change the way you eat, cut back on alcohol this month, and up your intake of water and healthy foods. If you do it for a month, you can do it for life. Use this month to take stock of your health now and think about where you want it to be. Do you want to exercise more, gain muscle, eat more vegetables, spend more time with family and friends, set up an appointment with your doctor, seek small and achievable goals. Get educated. Take this opportunity to read about the common health issues that are specific to men and how you can prevent them. If you're worried about a symptom, a hurting knee, a persistent ache, 
a past injury, a mental health stress that's gotten your attention. It can be easy to get in a cycle of worrying about it, but do nothing about it. Going to the doctor can do incredible things. One, you can get that help figuring out what's really going on. And two, knowing allows you to stop worrying and start attending to the concern. Men's Health Month encourages you to get yourself checked and so you can feel better and stop worrying. Men's Health Month gets us all committed to take, talking about and supporting men's health. Exercise plans get made, appointments get made, precautions are followed, and resolutions get addressed. Lots of things that are good for your body are also good for your soul. Pray, play, move, gather, gather with others, laugh, relax, nap. And if anyone asks the occasion for such activity, you have an answer at the ready. It is Men's Health Month. <laughs> Thank you. Let us remember that uh, next week is the deacon's offering. So I encourage you to pull that out. You don't have to send coins, but you can send a check to the church. Just put deacon's offering in the memo line and that will get it to where it needs to be. Remember, the deacons are available to help people financially at this time of stress. So please uh, consider that. Other announcements can be found in our bulletin, but let's leave this service feeling empowered. Can I add one more announcement? Sorry, this is Jan. I, I just put a link in the chat um, for people who want to put add themselves to the Marin City group. Um, there's a community conversation ongoing on ending and stopping racism. And I know lots of people on this know these folks better than I do, but they had their first meeting on Wednesday and it was an incredible group. There were over 160 people participating. The panels moderated by TAM High Principal J.C. Farr. It included um, Deputy DA Otis Bruce, Professor Walter Turner from College of Marin, Reggie Lyles, who's uh, at Allen Temple Baptist, but was a Novato um, police chief, the Reverend Dr. Ambrose Carroll, who started Green the Church, um, Dr. Lewis Merriweather Moore, and my former student at Bayside MLK, Ayana Morgan Woodard is the voice of youth. And um, it, it was just a really uplifting community coming together um, to continue the conversation about specific actions we can take toward ending and stopping racism. So I'd encourage everybody to block your calendars for Tuesday, June 30th at 6 p.m. and um, join the next conversation, join the group. And um, it is a you won't be disappointed. It's a great movement and community coming together. Thank you. Together, let us affirm our parish purpose. The, the spirit, spirit of the Lord, Lord is, is upon me, me anointing, anointing me to preach the news to the poor, sending me to proclaim relief to the captives and the receiving of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Thank you. And now let us go to our benediction. As we leave this place, remember, God has chosen you and knows your name, and now sends you out into the world to pray and disrupt injustice. May you run and not be weary, walk and not grow faint. May you rise up on the wings of eagles. May you know without doubt that the everlasting God goes with you. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among you and within you as you seek to do God's will. Amen. Jesus in me, but the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, but the Jesus in you, so we say, so we say, so we say, is it love? The joy that's in you, hey, the joy that's in me, 